All right, fine. I'll be a gracious host. How you doing? Little Mermaid is the scariest Disney movie by far, though. Why the hell is Ace Blade in your Kickstarter? <laughs> Some comics. We going I'm getting controversial today. We're gonna get controversial today with with. My my proudest moment is this interview and being able to talk to you too. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Taurus Comics in collaboration with Fourth Wall Productions, respectfully brings to you the 109th episode of the Four Tales podcast. I'm your host, Kyron Silva from Taurus Comics. Across the way is the great essayist of Ace Blade, Danny J. Quick, and together we are your two award-winning Blurred Comic Creators here to help you find your next favorite comic. We are live on the Age of the Geekdom Network via Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. TikTok today? No? And TikTok. TikTok today. Okay. Uh, kick, my understanding. So if you're listening or watching us live, thank you for your support. But don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and review this podcast. Because all your positive reviews and interactions help us reach a bigger audience. When did we get a kick account? Uh, Mike said we have a kick account for Age of Geekdom. Oh, okay. Nice. Hey, I like it. Okay. I don't know. All right. You said you want to start off with this. So let's, let's, let's start off with this. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we got one hour left on the request Kickstarter. We still need four thousand dollars, but it's possible. It's Pop. possible to do. I mean, you get some high backing people somewhere in the world that can just drop yeah. a four stacks on that and be good. Yeah, exactly. You know, I we just all recently talked to you know Colin Kaepernick, so you know maybe he'll jump in there at the last moment and be like, you know what, bless the campaign with four K. You know. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe, you know, some independently wealthy um, other creators will, will will jump in, you know, or, you know, maybe we'll get a surge online of, you know, 40 people who want to jump, throw in $100 a piece, you know. But either way, you know, I think we did a good job with this campaign. See, somebody just back right now. I just saw it go up. Go. There you go. There we go. You know what I'm saying? So um, shout out to everybody who, who pledged and, and everybody who's been sharing. Thank mm-hmm. y'all, man. We we really appreciate it. Uh, crowdfunding is hard, no matter no matter what. I just did a post talking about it. It was difficult um, for most of us, anyway. But our guest, <laughs> our guest that we have on today, um, <laughs> is killing it. Her and her team have been killing it on um on all the crowdfunding um, platforms. I think they are on backer kit right now with their. Yeah, talk about the backer kit. Yeah, yeah, that's one. Of, that's one of the things yeah, that. with our with our guest today. Um, we have, if you're ready to bring her on, Miss Sarah White in the building from Laguna Studios. How you doing? Hello. I am wonderful. I'm glad to that you moved your your start date or start time to a little later because yeah. I'm not functional at nine o'clock. <laughs> I'm just not. Most of us aren't. Most of us aren't, especially on a Saturday. This is supposed to be the day that you can that you can sleep in and everything. And you know, I had Kyron up at seven a.m. I was like, you know what? Let's let's fix that. No, let's be honest. I had to I had to be up at six a.m. to prepare for the seven a.m. show. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. But you know, it was worth it, man. We we did a, we did some great things that that first with those first four seasons. But now, you know, it's more accessible to especially our West Coast and Central Time. Um, folks, so you know we're, we're we're happy to move it. But um, Sarah, um, you know anybody? I think anybody who follows us would definitely know about you, um, Lori and Laguna Studios. But if they don't, give us a background on you. Um, how long you've been creating, and um, you know just just what you're working on now. Oh well, how long have I been creating? I think always. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, since we since all of us since we were old enough to pick up a pencil right we've been doing some stuff um but as far as comics goes i think maybe 10 years now i've been involved in some way nice um did not really have a background in comics at all but um lori texted me and was like what do you know about lettering because they had an emergency lettering situation i was like i don't know it seems pretty easy i was already uh i had already been doing uh graphic design for a bit so um, I was like, ah, how much different could it possibly be? 
And that's how I ended up sticking around. Like I just they 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 didn't they didn't kick me back out after <laughs> the situation was resolved. So I stayed and it was fine. And I've been doing this stuff ever since then. That means, yeah, you that, must have, it means you must have did a good job. I think that's, that's what, what Danny and I say about Age of the Geekdom. You guys haven't kicked us out yet, so we must be doing a good job. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like, we don't listen to you guys in, in the chat. We just <laughs> show up. We just show up and, and do it and do our show. And then hopefully we got everything right. But, um, but no, man, I think uh, that's something that we share. We both have a background in graphic design. And that's why I thought, you know, the same thing. I was like, oh. You know, I can I can letter these comics. You know, this is something I can do. Of course, it was a little harder than I than I <laughs> initially thought it would be. And there's, yeah. a, there's a there's a small learning curve for for lettering in comics, but you know, it's especially not just with, putting letters into a bubble. It's that's right. what I thought. But there's there's a little more to it than that. But if you already have a background, then it's yeah. not so hard to pick up. I think if somebody didn't know how to you know say use Illustrator, for example, yeah, that might be yeah. a bit more of a problem. But that's the big thing. The, having the having the uh, expertise in, in the software, knowing the tools, I guess you'd say, um, made it a lot easier for me. And I'm, I'm, I'm guessing for you too. So, um, yeah, yeah. um, but no, we're glad to have you on. Um, how long, I know Laguna studios started, um, kind of recently, how long, tell us about the name Laguna studios and, and, um, you know, how y'all got your start. Yeah. So, well, um, so we had a uh, personal things happened, with the people who, because you know, obviously, I used to be on Likely Hero Studios, and um, some personal stuff happened with them, and it just wasn't a good fit anymore. And mm -hmm. Lori and I uh, talked a bunch about it, and decided that we'd strike out and do our own studio, and we did that in August of 2023. Yeah. So Laguna Studios itself is technically pretty new, but we've been doing, you know, um, Unlikely Hero Studios before that was. 13 14 years old so we've yeah. been doing it for a while via them but man i i remember uh dang on what was the name of the the, the heroes book that y'all had surgeon. Uh, no not the, the surgeon super super um oh. just super it was, it was so amazing uh i remember uh i think Lori sent me some some copies back when i had the shop um to to sell in the store and um the surgeon is is one of my favorite indie comics you know, so um, y'all do great work. You do you do amazing things. You you tell Thank good you. stories. You always put together great teams for your projects too. But the um the the project that you guys have um, funding now, I think is just amazing. Like I think y'all did it at the right time. I think it just looks amazing. It's just a great project all around. So I'm I'm gonna I want the expertise. I want to come to you and find out some stuff because. <laughs> Um, as you saw earlier, we had, you know, trouble getting getting our, our, our latest project funded on Kickstarter. I want to know about, um, you know, this project, how you decided to go with this one. And, um, of course, the, the backer kit platform and their crowdfunding methods. What's the differences between, you know, something like Kickstarter or um, Patreon or, you know, um, GoFundMe? Well, before or we get that deep into it, let's just ask her what it is she's yeah, you know, bring that, that to the yeah, show. Right. That's right. I, <laughs> <laughs> like you getting too far into the interview. You need to start at the I'm beginning. Trying get, I'm trying to get there. Yeah, what is it myself. you're trying to show today? <laughs> well, we have our um, X series attire and pins, and you know it's the homage to your favorite uh, '90s, you know, mutant heroes, and it's uh, it just they're just they're hoodies. I mean, it doesn't get a lot. You can't be more basic than that, right? They're hoodies, and okay. And I need you to wait. I need you to go back. Okay. You, you said X attire, but I need you to say it correctly with with the pins. What was the actual right way to say the pins? <laughs> the the astonishing pins. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Ooh, I Ooh. love it. All right. These yeah, pins um, actually look great. These uh, are great. The pins are the pins are not everybody's cup of tea. Uh, we have learned this. Really. Um, a lot of people uh gave us started to um give us a lot of crap about being sexist. And it's like, but they're all like, there, it's a, it's a, a butt. It doesn't have a gender. It's just a butt. I, I, and boy butts. There's, there's, yeah, everybody's butts? butts are in there. Everybody's butts are in there. I thought I was going to butt hurt. It, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, I know it. Yeah. It started out from that, you know, that, that, that rogue meme about the, right. the way that oh. she was angled and her butt was sticking out and everybody, mm -hmm. oh, everybody lost their damn minds. Uh, and I'm not even sure. 
how old that is. But so um super old. Yeah. Like how old that picture is, but like the meme happened fairly recently. Yeah. And yeah, and so it just seemed like a funny a funny play on that on that meme. Okay. And yeah, and if you don't like the pins, that's cool. Uh yeah. that's and it's just it was just meant to be a joke. There's nothing there's nothing sexist about it. It was just a joke. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, but you're doing cards too, right? I, I know I saw a post with um some physical cards. That's part of the campaign, also, right? Physical cards. I saw somebody had the um like the collectors cards. I want to say you posted a picture of, of them in a binder. I believe in my in my mistake. Oh mistaken? yeah yeah yeah. Um, those I don't think those are available on the campaign. Oh, okay. Um, they were just, just they were just some inspiration and yeah and showing off. I guess mm. um, those are not my cards. I don't have any cards. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, but but yeah, like the inspiration for a lot of these designs, and mm. um and yeah, like that's I I actually don't know that much about the source material, mm. so. Um, so I've been, I've been oh, learning. Look, look, I'm sorry. Okay. So we're going to have to kick Sarah out. She doesn't know about the source <laughs> material. This is just not going to happen on my show. That's terrible. You think, why are you kicking all of our guests off the show? This is like the, this is like the third time this season you kick somebody off the show. Should I bring her back on then? Bring Sarah back, Kyron. Fine. Jeez. Come on now. Rude. Give her a chance. And you want me to tell you how we use backer kit? And... No, Rude. See, excuse, excuse him. I will talk excuse to Danny him. privately. Is... No, okay. okay. I'm not going to tell Kyron anymore. <laughs> his, his butler can help him. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah My yeah, butler has been terrible. annoying recently. He doesn't do anything. I'm just lazy. Terrible. Terrible. No, no. It's oh, okay. Uh, but... But I, I didn't be I didn't because uh, uh, as a kid we didn't have any damn TV channels so mm. I, uh, I I didn't get to watch anything but Disney because that's what came in on the on, and then they and then they took Disney away and put it on satellite so finally right. but um yeah it was more of a was it um what was w, the WB before it was the WB it um. was something or was it the it was the wb and then it changed to, yeah, yeah it i watched the cartoons on wb and on saturday morning so if it wasn't on there i probably didn't get to see much of it see kyron it was an access issue come on now you can't you can't <sighs> talk sarah because she didn't have access you know now, I didn't if you do... want to quiz me on like john wayne movies i know a lot about uh... john wayne movies because that's what my dad loved to watch when i was a kid okay so that's see? what i know about <laughs> See, see, Kyron, see, <laughs> um, you know, I didn't, I infamous, infamously didn't read comic books at all until I became an adult because I didn't have comic book stores, you know, I didn't have mm -hmm. anywhere to get Same. them, you know, Same. until I, I started. My cousin my had some comics and I, but he, it was, it was mostly Superman stuff mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I would pick it up because it looked pretty and then I'd try to read it and understand what the hell was going on. And I was like, I, I'm there's I'm missing a whole bunch of story here. I don't know what's happening. So I would just look at the pictures and never really absorbed any of the story. Yeah. So they're complicated. They get Yeah. Superman, Superman is one of those that's got a lot of I mean, they did they, they do a lot of reboots, of course, you know, and try to try to bring it back, but you know, it's all there's so many villains and uh different versions of, uh, and cousins and and all kinds of stuff. So Yeah. But you there's know, a lot going on. But now but I, I like to look at the pictures. That's yeah, that's sure. what I did. For sure. Now you you guys are killing this though with this attire and pins. I mean, you're... yeah, we we figured it would do pretty well, but we weren't figuring it was going to do thirty five thousand dollars well. Yeah. Like we thought, we thought maybe half that would be like we were like, oh, we'll get maybe twenty thousand at by the end of the month, and this is this is crazy that it's doing so well. And um, I know. Um, uh, Lori's Lori's partner is the one who designed most of this stuff with um like they they were they were messing with it together and and they have already run out of like they all the designs that that they had made are already used now so uh, I mean not like there's not enough uh, not enough source material there's plenty of source material right for sure mm. yes. but um but yeah there's definitely uh, the the stuff that was already made because that's we didn't. Nobody thought that we were going to need that much stuff. <laughs> it mm. turns out, like, yeah, there's so much. And, and it's it's gotten an, an overwhelmingly positive. You know, the people that are pissed off about the butt pins are in the minority. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I would, I, I'm, I'm curious, were you, um, in the early discussions before you started this, were you 
considering the release of of this new show that just came out and you know kind of timing it up with that or was that a coincidence or what do you what, what were the early conversations about it was I, no i guess it was more it was it was timed we kind of wanted to do it around that time because it was uh because like this this happened i originally um my understanding is that at um they were just messing around playing with this new template and mm -hmm. that this whole idea had come had blossomed around that and okay. then they were like oh the new show is happening we should make this a thing for the new show and and uh Lori, well and i i actually i'll be honest i express skepticism that we could actually make that happen in such a short amount of time because we're talking like a month ago wow. <laughs> so <laughs> So um, maybe maybe it was a little more than a month, but like we, I was I was like I don't I don't know how we're gonna be able to do this in such with like cause you know how how hard it is to put together kickstarters and stuff. Yeah. Like, it's a lot of work, and backer kit is very different from. I mean, there's a lot like the basic setup is similar, but there's a lot that's different about backer kit. Like there's um there's a community tab on the Kickstarter or the backer kit page where you can go and. Uh, vote in polls and leave comments and stuff and we could put up polls there is a section you can you can we can embed live streams in there okay. and then when you and when you have a live stream the day that you have the live stream backer kit puts you on the front page wow so are we on the front page right now i don't know i sent uh i sent over the information that we needed to put our stuff on there but i don't know if it happened i'm gonna say yeah <laughs> oh, yeah sure. we're on the, yeah sure <laughs> No, oh, I think I think that's great. I think there's a lot of these um, crowdfunding platforms that are doing really innovative things. And, um, you know, just like I always tell people with like social media platforms, like you have to find the one that's best for you. So, you know, I, I you do very that well. for me. Did I? Yeah, I've been saying that. I told you that. Oh, well, like <laughs> you've been saying. Well, it's, <laughs> like it, is, it is very true. It is very in. And um, right now. Well, OK. Right up until Brandon Sanderson's new book broke the whole backer kit platform for a couple of yeah. hours, mm -hmm. we we had been under you know we had been on, in the mindset that backer kit's a great place to run merchandise campaigns, not mm -hmm. so much for books. But I'm hoping with the you know the the huge like there's like there's like literally twenty thousand backers on Brandon Sanderson's campaign, and he's made tens of millions of dollars at this point. So I'm hoping that that means that we can take a chance and run a run a, a book on it we're gonna we're gonna be doing that probably maybe even this year we might be doing a book on on backer kit because there's just i don't i love kickstarter i do and it's been very good to us but backer kits i end up putting them to shame right now <laughs> they okay. it's it's very easy to use if you haven't uh so anybody watching that hasn't actually built a kickstarter campaign they have changed it a lot so like now you you need like three different graphics for each reward tier right like you need to make yeah. three different pieces three different images just and then you have to fill in everything uh you know fill in on which the text stuff is stuff that you have to figure out anyway but like three different images is a lot mm -hmm. a lot and of you have to upload to them to separately easily. yeah yeah, each place, it, each each image needs to be uploaded in a separate place, and half the time their damn uploader breaks. It's just, it's just, it's a whole ordeal getting the stuff built. So, and backer kit's been easier in that respect. Yeah. I think so, backer kit, whoever's running backer kit, um, I think they did a great job of of getting, you know, kind of the information. You know, I I think I'm pretty sure Lori was the one who introduced us to backer kit, also. <laughs> Um, me and Morgan, me and Morgan used it to do, you know, just the back end, the fulfillment stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the day we were fulfilling through backer kit and it made it so much easier so much to easier. to oh, fulfill. Gosh. Like fulfillment was the is the worst part of all of all of comics to me. Yes. The most oh. stressful, I think, too. Like, yeah, it's stressful yeah. waiting for your campaign to fund, but like, oh my God, screwing up an order. Right. So horrible. Trying to keep everything aligned and make sure all the rewards are going to the right people. That is a lot of work that people don't think about. Yeah, and Backer Kit made that a lot easier. But then also, I think during that time, they were, of course, collecting information. They were they were doing research and finding, you know, which what things people like the most, what what, you know, made things easier for people. And, and then once they launched the ability to actually crowdfund on there, I think they had a really good, you know, kind of base for what people wanted and what what you know the actual 
users um, would do with the platform. And then, of course, to get somebody like Brandon Sanderson on there mm -hmm. um, kills. Lori kills. has a gift of being like she has managed to become friends with so many people at Kickstarter and Backer Kit. And mm -hmm. she had a conversation about like they about them um, recruiting Brandon Sanderson and how like it was it's it's mm. it's, it's fascinating. I'm not I'm not allowed to talk to you about any of it, but uh, but you know like it was just fascinating yeah. about hearing that that's <laughs> like that's how much they that's how passionate they are about their their platform too because like they went out there and they got the guy who broke Kickstarter and right. then invited him over and you know wooed him over to Backer Kit so that he could then break Backer Kit. <laughs> right. Hey, right. I love it. I love the whole thing and uh whatever whatever it takes to 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 make it easier for people to create you know um i'm all for it so mm -hmm. um, even though crowdfunding can be stressful it's it's an integral part of making comics for us indies or making just making things you know for for people you know who may not be working at marvel or dc or you know in at nike or you know, in, you know, industrial logistics or whatever, whatever it is that you mm -hmm. want to create to have a platform where people can come and, and invest in and, you know, kind of um, get in on the front end to help you make those things. I'm all for it, you know, so that's great. Uh, we have a question of what kind of podcast is this from Coffee 7 on Kick? Uh, we are the Four Tales podcast, Coffee 7. We interview comic creators and writers, artists, things like that around the world every Saturday at this time. So glad you can join us. And today we have the amazing Sarah White from Laguna Studios. Uh, Sarah, you mentioned something about upcoming projects. What can you tell us about that? We actually have one launching on Monday, another thing. So, Are you, are you done uh, with all the graphics for that one that's launching on Monday? <laughs> <laughs> obviously not <laughs> what what kind of what kind of independent creator would i be if i was ready before the thing launched <laughs> right right <laughs> oh my goodness no we actually uh most of what has to be done yet is just that you know sitting and uploading to three different places but i didn't actually finish all of the graphics i've got like i said i'm, at, I'm over three quarters done now mm -hmm. and i think Lori is going to upload stuff because she had been uploading as i was finishing i would i would make a bunch and i would dump them into the google drive and then she would add them <laughs> excuse me and then uh and then yeah like last night i was working on them and i fell asleep on the couch i was like you know that's the, that's the that's the downside to using a laptop because like you can sit comfortably wherever and just work but the downside is that <laughs> if you're sitting comfortably then you can also fall asleep comfortably <laughs> Right. So is this a is this a book project? Is it a what is it? Is it is a which, comic. Oh and yeah, it is a comic. It is a um an erotic comic called Death's Kiss. And it was you guys are making an erotic comic? What? what? That's unusual. I know. Isn't it? Kyra is terrible. <laughs> well, I mean, to be to be technical, we didn't make it. Um <laughs> oh. we we are publishing it. And um Russell Nolte and SK Prince made mm. it. Okay. And um, it's been illustrated by Ishan Lee, and she I'm, is I'm amazing. It's so pretty, and it is. I mean, yeah, there are there are sexy parts in it, but it is a really good story. Like people are people. I just saw somebody post on uh, I don't remember which place, but this morning I saw somebody post on a social media like, about how they're sick of uh, erotic comics, and if you, that's all you're making, then I'm probably going to unfollow you. And I was like why bye i mean i have seen an increase in erotic comics but if you don't like it you don't have to yeah, back it you don't have to read it. it yeah yeah and honestly the thing that we because we've been talking about doing an erotic comic for three years now and the thing that we Lori and i were like the thing that we need to do is make sure it's a good story it can't yeah. just be sex like that's not what we wanted because a lot of these comics that we have seen that is that's all that they, they're shoehorning a story into sex and that's not what we want we want a natural flow yeah. of romantic moments happening within a good story we don't want to shoehorn anything into anything so yeah. and now we've actually um so we published heart eater in september yeah yeah last 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 fall <laughs> september i think and we got a pretty pos positive response on that and you know the first issue of any comic is like it's world building you don't get to see a whole lot of exciting adventurous stuff happening yet but 
I think we set it up pretty well. We got a lot of p positive feedback. And that now we're doing Death's Kiss, which is, um, it's, it's one of those, I, t I kept saying it's one of those stories that mm. you start, it really, it, 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 it um, made my own imagination. I'm like sitting here going, well, I, what happens with this? And like, like it, my, I had, I had like five different spinoffs happening of mm. fan fiction after I finished reading it. <laughs> so like it's it. a really intriguing story. I know um, Russ is Russ has done great things on Kickstarter. He's great with um, with with bringing a crowd to projects. I, mm -hmm. I see his emails all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so and I know he's a great storyteller, so I can imagine that this one's going to I haven't seen any any visuals from it yet, but I can imagine that it's going to be great. Um, so we'll be looking forward to it. You said it's launching on Monday on Kickstarter. Monday. Yep. That's um, we're actually going to have a live stream launch party and my my live stream, which is also an agents of geekdom. Is uh, <laughs> is um, actually we're gonna run it a little. We're gonna run a like a double live stream thing, and talk about we're gonna so we're gonna launch Death's Kiss and then talk about that for a bit on Agents of Geekdom here. So, uh, well, so that's how you'll know when we're launching is when you see that live stream. I feel like that live stream should be called like Double Entendre, Double Penetration, something sexually related. I don't know why. What? <laughs> I'm just saying. I was thinking about calling it Death's Kiss Livestream Live No, party. no, no. <laughs> no. Kyrie, you're fire, bro. Okay, I, I... And he kicked me out, man, for not knowing. Not knowing some stuff. This guy. You I just over... find it astonishing <laughs> that you didn't know about more in source material. That's all. So, uh, yeah, I just found it. I just found it. Uh, Death's Kiss, a supernatural romance comic for readers 18 plus. Already got 675 followers on the project. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm sure. SK um, Prince is a very huge romance novelist. Mm -hmm. um, did a, And, and um, had I guess had wanting to been wanting to um, commit one of her stories to the comic book format. So nice. this was what were her first foray. And we've talked, we've been talking with her and she's really fun and really really great to work with so i mean i'm not like we can't rule out future projects where we collaborate with her nice um i, I know y'all are gonna do a great job and um i look forward to to continued success are y'all taking um y'all taking more submissions at laguna studios what's, what's we up? are <laughs> always you you're always welcome to send stuff in <laughs> I got some ideas. I got some ideas. He's got this character called Ace Knife that he wants to yeah. submit to you. Yeah, I got, I got some yeah. good ones. Yeah. Interesting. Ace Ace I'm going to have to hear, hear more, but... <laughs> <laughs> but... Ace Bullet? Ace Bullet. Ace Bullet. Hey, I think that will go. I think Ace Bullet will work. <laughs> That's better than Club Bat. <laughs> I like Club. I like Club Bat. Club Bat is a is a funny guy, even though he already got his bat broken in the first appearance. That was, you know, that was crazy. But anyways, okay. um, so now is the time. Um, Sarah, you know, you know how this goes. You've seen the show. Um, it's time for quick takes. Kyrie, Wait, have you seen ready? our show before? <laughs> I I don't see I don't see your show live very often. That's for sure. But okay. I mean, I've watched. Yes. <laughs> All right, so sometimes <laughs> so um for anyone in the audience who 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 may not have seen quick takes this is a rapid fire q and a session where we grill our guests on their deepest darkest secrets that we found on the internet um and all in hopes of getting our audience to know you a little bit better. So, we've got five five questions. Um, you're going to have 45 seconds each to answer them off the top of your head. And here we go. Question number one. Why do people hate cats? Because they're wrong. Isn't that it? Because they're wrong. <laughs> what is it about? What is it about people that? You know, just don't like cats, man. I know I myself, I'm a dog person, but I don't mind cats. But I know you're a cat lover, right? I am, yes. Um, I think that people don't like cats because cats kind of, cats don't follow the same rules that dogs do. Dogs mm. do everything to please their people, and cats don't give a shit if you're happy or not. <laughs> so you have to earn a cat's respect, but a dog just gives it to you implicitly. Dogs just give it up, yeah. Okay, dogs are easy, sure. Dogs are All easier. Right. 
<laughs> Question number two. Uh, in 45 seconds, if uh, there was somebody who's new to crowdfunding, what would be your um, crowdfunding tips to someone in 45 seconds? Ooh. Um, research. Research the hell out of what you're doing before you do it. Um, over prepare is good. Like you don't want to, you don't want to go in there thinking you are just going to wing it because that's a bad way to do it. Um, figure out how you're going to advertise. That's always difficult. And that's probably the hardest part of, of getting people to fund your campaign is, is uh, figuring out how to make your stuff get in front of other people's eyes. What else? Um, that's a good one. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and networking is also important. I think you should probably, before you set, do your stuff, you should probably get out there and find other people who have already done it, make friends with them, find out where they find their people and try to make as many friends as you can to get that, uh, to get that networking happening. Okay. I like it. I love it. Research, marketing, networking. I love it. Um, great advice. All right. Question number three. Um, since we've got the the X series that is uh, X inspired, I want to know in 45 seconds, what do you think are the other best brands in comics that uh, could do well in an in in, in inspiration? Oh, um, I mean, oh, oh, like anything from the MCU, probably. Right. That's doing mm -hmm. well in the MCU right now. Um, For sure. Let's see. I mean, yeah. The DC stuff has kind of been flagging a bit. So, but like, obviously people still love them. So I'd have to say, you know, like if you wanted to take inspiration from Batman, you're not going to go wrong. Um, yeah. Let's see who else. God, I like a lot of the, I like a lot of the dark horse stuff too. Mm. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, think, I think people could get away with, with Spider-Man too now, especially since the Spider-Verse has so many different, Ones they wouldn't, you wouldn't really know if it was part of Spider Man or not. <laughs> That's true. All the all the um, all the multi multiverse stuff, like you could make up your own thing and never even get, in, never even never even get close to being uh, in trouble for copyright infringement with that. Like it wouldn't have to be inspired by. It's just like it's in an alternate universe. There's no copyright on alternate universes. <laughs> universe seventy three twenty three. You don't know. Um, okay. All right. So uh, question number four, and this one. Uh, I I love perler beads. I used to love doing the perler beads um, with my children, but it's so tedious. So um, are you still doing the perler beads and what are the best and worst parts of, of doing them? I do still do perler beads stuff. Um, the best part is that I like to put, I like to set up my table and put on a movie and just, just make whatever mm -hmm. I'm making. Um, the worst part is now getting to the point of coming up with new ideas. I just keep doing the same stuff over and over again because that's what everybody likes. Mm. Um, it is messy. If you uh, the longer the the longer you do it, the better you get at containing the mess. But it is messy. <laughs> yeah, and definitely. the the worst part is the worst part is definitely when you get like ninety percent done with a really huge project and then you go to stand up and admire your work and you slam your hips into the table and you destroy the whole damn thing. <laughs> many Absolutely. curse words, many tears happen. <laughs> but Absolutely. Yeah, definitely still fun though. I mean, if you if you uh, are good at being able to turn off your brain for a, like, like have you ever been driving and just um, kind of tuned out the world and just did, like, it's, it's kind of the same thing where it kind of resets your brain a little bit. At least it does for me. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Kyron, you look confused. What's up? I was trying to figure out what the hell a perler bead was. And I was like, that's what those things... I just looked it up. I'm like, that's what those things are called? <laughs> I never knew they had a name. Yeah, perler beads yeah, are amazing. Perler bead sprites is the finished product is a sprite. Um, yeah, I knew a sprite. I, I, I knew the sprites, but I didn't know they were called perler beads. So. Yeah, well, there are several different brands. I think yeah, that that perler is the uh, perler is the most recognizable one, but there's like Hama and Art Cal too, so they're not yeah. the only one. Absolutely. All right. So... Um, question number five, um, we always have um, our guests do a top five list off the top of their, their head because we have another show. We have another show called Top Five Live that we do um, with Morgan Iverson and Javon Stokes. So um, your top five lists, um, even though you said you did not know the sor source material, I want to know what are your top five cartoons of all time? Top five cartoons? Ooh. This this is gonna date me now. Everybody's gonna know how old I am. Uh -oh. I like 
I like My Little Pony, and I like Gummy Bears, and I like Care Bears. I oh, also really? like Freakazoid. And, ooh, what's the fifth? Um, God, I mean, Avatar The Last Airbender. I just ah, that's a good ah, one. love that show. That's a good one. Is that and, five? I yeah, that's five. five. That's, a, that's a, so for, for Avatar to make your list when you got, you know, mostly 80s, 90s comics, it's, that's, a, that's high praise because it's a, that's a great show. I love Avatar The Last Airbender too. Do you, you prefer Aang or Korra? Korra or Aang? I mean, I guess Aang because he was the first one, but Korra is really, I did not like Korra at first, but she mm. won me over. And I, Korra you know, I think that I have, yeah, I think I have more respect for Korra than I do for yeah. Aang, but that's also not fair because we make Korra when she's basically an adult and we make Aang when yeah. he's 12 years old and he just got defrosted from an iceberg. Right. So, right. I don't Korra, know, Korra I guess. Had, Korra had better villains for me, like the. The villains in Korra were 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 top notch. Um, yeah, so, but I, I was allowed to expand and become something, whereas they sort of kept Aang the same throughout the entire series. Yeah, yeah. they did. Um, I I think that what was kind of cool with, with Aang was how he um, he had this from the beginning, where he said, "Do I, I don't want to kill." Because he knew he knew right away, I don't I don't want to have to kill the Fire Lord, and he knew that he might have to. And they, I think that it was, I think that it was glossed over a little too much about why he wanted to do that. Cause like he, that was the one thing he had left. Everything else in his entire world was gone and had been for a hundred years. Mm -hmm. And the one thing he had left was to not kill. That's all he wanted to do was be able to hang on to that one last value of his. And everybody was telling him, even his previous incarnations of himself were telling him, you have to. And then he figured out a way to not do that. And that was pretty cool. Yeah, and and then passed it on too because like Korra can now pass yeah. that to the next Avatar and so on, and it's a and it's and it's a very powerful tool for a for an Avatar to have. I love the evolution and and all the from from the beginning to the end, just in the bending. The you know they went from just being able to do water, then you got blood bending, you had lightning, mm -hmm. fire, you know, you had the, the lava. Avatar. Baba, yeah, it was it was crazy. So still a uh, metal band, like it was. I, I really, I really enjoyed that. So mm -hmm. well, thank you for doing that. That was uh, our quick takes um, this week, sponsored by. Um, oh, I got you. I got you. Uh, this week's quick takes sponsored by Danny's workshop at the Durham Library. That's happening uh, in an hour. Like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not gonna make it. Yeah. Oh, you might, yeah, might not might be to make that. You know what? If you don't make his, you can come to Empire's Comics Vault for my workshop today, also. <laughs> That'll probably be closer. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Why did we have oh. work, both workshops on the same day? I mean, hey, I like it. See, it's, that means the show is working. That means somebody's doing something right. Not me. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sir. Well, we appreciate you being on. This has been a fun time. Uh, we want to make sure all our listeners and viewers uh, follow you and Laguna Studios and everything. Uh, so what is the best location that people can check you guys out and keep up with you social media wise? We're most active on Facebook right now. Uh, bound to change at some point, I'm sure. But right <laughs> now it's Facebook and it's at Laguna Studios Comics. Or you can uh, just go to our website, which is Laguna Studios at Oh, no, lagunastudios.net. There we go. <laughs> but most of the social media places is at Laguna Studios Comics. I love it. I love it. Danny, where can people check you out? Um, best place to find it, find me is our website, fourthwallpros.com. We're now on Patreon, um, Patreon backslash Aceblade, and um, at the Aceblade on all social media platforms. Kai, where can people find you? Are, are there comics that you can find on your Patreon? Um, you can get the digital comics and you can get the um, you can get all our digital comics on Patreon and you can get the amazing adventures of Ace Blade, um, which will be starting back up pretty soon. Oh, OK. All right. All right. Uh, me. Uh, you can find me at Tor. Wait, who 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 writes the uh, amazing adventures of Ace Blade? Just I write it. I you write know. it. But the artist is this guy right here. <laughs> Kyron Silva. Okay. I just, I just that. Make Kyron, sure. Kyron doesn't know. Kyron and Wally are like my two favorite artists. Like anytime I have an idea for something, it's one of them that I go to first. And if they tell me, you know, they don't want to do it, then I'll I'll go find somebody else. 
All right. Uh, you can find me at TaurusComics.com. I am on all social media platforms at Taurus Comics. Uh, and if this is your first time checking out this podcast, you can go to our website. That is uh, fourtalespodcast.com. That is the number four, T-A-L-E-S podcast.com. You can go back, listen to our previous episodes, uh, buy merchandise, support us financially there. Uh, but definitely make sure, though, you join us next week where we're going to have Harold Pete from New Horizon Comics on. We're talking about everything that he's working on. And if you want to maybe keep up with the Age of the Geekdom Network, you can check out Sarah's show. Uh, her, she has an amazing show. So what, what day is All it? Right. What day and time is that on, Cher? Excuse me. That is Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern. There you go. All right. Well, everybody, until next time, sayonara, goodbye, Bye. and please take care of yourselves. Your top five fish. <laughs> <laughs>